one of the reasons that you know bad guys are so effective, even though they may not have any actual expertise, is they're fluent in a language that most people don't even want to think about. They're fluent in the language of violence. The way that you fix that situation, you manage that situation, is by demonstrating a willingness to communicate using that very same language, which means that you have to communicate at the same intensity level that they're at. And once they know that, things change. Things change uh, profoundly and usually very quickly because nobody ever approaches, we'll say, a a diminutive uh, sized female thinking that she may respond by trying to bite a chunk out of my neck. If they were thinking that way, they wouldn't approach you in the first place. And there's a very easy way that you can share that information with them. That's by doing it. And once you do it, uh, it has a tendency to, uh, you know, to, to lead to a, a more productive outcome. Without question. Yeah. What would you say to a woman or women listening right now? Or what would you have their husband or man in their life who's listening share with them when they have the thought of, I don't know if I could fight back. Um, I'm not sure that I could do it. I don't know that I'm strong enough to, if I have a 200 pound man who is trying to harm me and I have no fighting experience, mm-hmm. how, how, what, am I, what am I supposed to do? You know, like how, okay. how, how, why, how I, I just don't see myself being able to do it. Well, the, uh, the solution to that is to not ask the wrong questions in the first place or to apply the wrong criteria. And we tend to think of, well, okay, I'm five foot four, I'm a 45 year old woman, I'm 120 pounds. How could I possibly beat up a 220 pound attacker? You don't, that's not what this is. You change the narrative. They're the ones that decide to stop. So you don't have to overcome them. You don't have to defeat them. Uh, We go back to the woman with the vacuum cleaner, okay? She didn't incapacitate her attacker. She didn't win the fight. She won the situation. She won the situation by demonstrating that, okay, the longer you stay in my house, the the more cost you will incur. The cost is I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep hitting you on the head with this. He finally just, no, this isn't working for me. I'm not in the mood to rape anybody. I'm also a little concerned about the noise and the fact that, you know, this is drawing attention to the fact that I've just illegally entered another person's residence. So what we're looking to do is not beat anybody up. You know, this, this is not a contest in, in that sort of sense. This is, it's more of a contest of wills. And, you know, can you bring sufficient will to be willing to do what's necessary to give this person a reason to change their mind, you know, and, you know, trying to relocate a portion of their face from here to down here. Now their face will not break off or peel off or anything like that, but it will feel as though it is to the person in question. You know, if, if we're attacking, you know, we're, we're ripping at the mouth, we're attacking the eyes, you know, we're, acting as though we can just sort of detach the ears like Mr. Potato Head. Again, those ears will not come off in your hand like that. But you can say that you're going to rip his ears off and it's going to feel like you're ripping his ears off. You can grab both of his ears, twist them, and then jam your thumbs in as far as they can go. You're communicating in his native language in that moment. And you're communicating just as effectively as anyone has ever communicated. And that's what this is. So we don't overcome the attacker in the classical sense. You know, if I had to square up with Chris, Chris is much bigger than me. Um, that's, a, that's a whole different scenario. Okay, now we're, now we're looking, you know, for winners and losers. This is a, a completely different context. We're simply trying to remove the will of the person to continue on with their illegal acts. So it's overwhelming when we think about it the wrong way. It starts to seem achievable when we understand what the actual goal is. Um, I did a, a, a woman's self-defense class two weeks ago, and you know, it, it pointed out to me just how we sort of operate on a lot of assumptions, and a lot of these assumptions are uh, incorrect or unhelpful. So one of the women in the class uh, 
and I, I think she was feeling her age. She was probably 50. You know, she was uh, um, not as small as she used to be when she was younger. And she had a hip that made it difficult to get up and down off the floor, which we were doing plenty of. And there were a ton of, you know, college age and high school age girls that were like just fit and just bouncing around and doing everything like a boss. And that was starting to intimidate her. And she finally said, so if, if it's this hard for me to get up off the ground, how am I going to be able to, to run away from my attack? And I said, what on earth makes you think that you could outrun your attacker? Well, don't I have to get away? Well, no, he's going to get away from you. Your job is to motivate him to want to get away from you, to get away from the situation, you know, to uh, av avoid detection, you know, avoid a police response, to avoid any more, you know, face facial lacerations, you know, or, you know, groin grabbing or whatever it is that you're subjecting him to. It's his job to run away. And then it was kind of like, oh, OK. And then so suddenly, like, you know, the the bad hip wasn't quite so much a hindrance because she seemed like she had already thrown that switch. She was ready to dispense, you know, mayhem with her, her digits at that point. But when we think about things in the wrong way, and of course, you know, we always think about getting away from our attacker. Um, let's say that your attacker is a 22 year old male. That's someone you're going to outrun. Now it seems kind of silly when I frame it like that, but so, so much of us are thinking about things in ways that we've just sort of always conventionally thought about them without ever really trying to filter out, well, is this the best way to contemplate what I'm contemplating? It's, it's really good. I love it. You're, you're turning it around, flipping it around again, where you're making the attacker think about themselves, their own safety and their own ability to get out of pain and to get out of the situation without getting caught. Yeah. And so you're just completely flipping it, which is totally yeah. different from what most people will think of when they think self-defense. Mm -hmm. There's an emotional component to it, Mike, too, that you touched on uh, very intimately. I, I feel like with the females that were part of our, of our group, mm -hmm. of our course in, in, and I ended up releasing that actually as its own YouTube video. I cut that few minutes out where you're talking to women specifically about mm -hmm. plugging into the emotional side of, yeah. of, of those thoughts and, you know, and feelings of, of where you can find the strength in that moment. Could mm -hmm. you just touch on that really quickly? Uh, okay. If, if I, I'm sure you recall kind of, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do my best, Chris. Um, it, it's, it, it's a conversation I've had many times with, with female audiences, and, and I do um, a lot of these types of you know, female-only uh, presentations. And one of the challenges that all females bring is not just that, okay, he's going to be big and strong and scary, and, and I'm not those things. I mean, that, that's, you, you're sort of starting you know, with a keen awareness of, of a physical disparity, but there's, there's more than just that. Women are not neurologically wired for this the same way that guys are. Uh, and not that every guy is, you know, lots of guys aren't, you know, naturally, you know, combative, just like re ready to, to go. But, you know, women are empathetic. Women are culturally uh, conditioned to be empathetic. Uh, women will say things in a, in a class like, I don't know if I could do that, you know, not like because they don't want to hurt someone else. And it's like, that's not a typical guy thing to say. That's not something I've typically heard from guys when, you know, I've, I've taught males. So that suggested to me that, okay, there's, there, there's clearly something to this. And one of the things that I, I would say is, okay, I get how, it might feel difficult to sort of tap into your inner horribleness as, as, a, as a woman. I get that. And I respect that. Um, but here's maybe a way to sort of help yourself with that. Um, if it's not just you, but what if, again, if I'm, I'm speaking specifically to women, okay, so what if it's not just you? What if you are also in charge of the safety of a child? Maybe it's your child. Maybe it's a you know, niece. Maybe you're just babysitting. Um, if 
you felt as though harm could befall that child. Does, does that help? Does that start to make the situation look a little different? And almost in fear, it's like, oh, yeah. And what's interesting is I think the average woman has more capacity to sort of tap into that, you know, that sort of feral place, if you will, if you put someone else into the equation. Right. It's like, I don't know if I could do it to save myself or try to protect myself. Again, there's, there's just a lot of social conditioning and, and biology there that kind of gets in the way of that. But put a kid in there or even... Uh, what if you, you have an older parent, you're, you're driving them to the post office and you, you're, the, you're the safety solution in this situation. Um, you're going to do everything you can. Indeed, you'll do whatever it takes. So, but Mike, what if I'm alone in this situation? Well, are you really? Are you ever? Because let's say that you went to the store and this horrible situation is about to spool out, you know, in the, in the Target parking lot. And yes, you're alone in that moment, but uh, who else are you connected to? You know, who else out there is concerned about you, loves you, depends on you? If anything ever happened to you, they, they would suffer also. You know, so even if we are numerically outnumbered in the situation, and if it's a bad guy and it's just you, you're, you're outnumbered. You, you are physically outmatched in that moment. So that's when we need to sort of remember and tap into all of the other people. Now, again, if, if you've got a child or some, someone with you, you're not even going to think about it. It's like it's so easy to be brave for other people. But you can do the same thing even when it's just you. If you remember all of the other people in your life that you know, are counting on you to prevail, right? they would tell you if they were there, do whatever you can, do whatever it takes. And if you can carry that with you, I think you'll be a little stronger for it. Did I, did I cover it? You, you nailed it, buddy. Okay. I, just re- I just remember when you were first presenting that, and it, it, it wasn't a distinctly different part of the conversation because it was a time in the course, and pardon any little background noise, I have probably another alarm going off to, as a reminder because I have this awful memory anymore with all these little details of my life. So my phone is ding a in the background, but I'll take care of it in a moment. But Mike, Mike was very, um, very much uh, connected to what he was doing, so much so that it, it, it just felt like let's just have the, the, the women in the core sit in front of him while he touches on this, this area, this section of the material where you can tap in to all those relationships, all those people that mean something to you. And even for some of you guys out there who might need to hear that, those guys like you alluded to, that aren't necessarily the fighters, the rough and tumble guys, the macho men, you know, who are maybe a little bit more reserved and not looking for any kind of physical things just tap into all those all those uh relationships that you have and those people in your life that are counting on you and what they would want for you yeah yeah that's right we it, we need it, to bring all of those people with us wherever yeah, we go that's right you're bringing them to the fight so to speak like you said and then you're you're going to outnumber your attacker at that point and you're going to do what it takes and you're going to get out of that situation and that's what makes real life self-defense so great is because, as I've said many times in this conversation, it's designed for the man or the woman with absolutely no experience in doing anything like this. And in just a matter of a few hours going through this material and practicing just some of these very basic moves, you can really arm yourself and prepare yourself for that worst day of your life situation. 